want to tell you a story about the gardener who believes he, she is one with nature, who has this special relationship with all the plants, all the flora, and the fauna, and the fauna too, right? And they're making things beautiful, and every day they wake up, and they reminded, and they think how they're building and developing this relationship between the client and the client's property, the client's garden, and all these flowers, these plants, hedges, bushes, shrubs, trees, the grass, how they're making everything beautiful in this beautiful relationship. And they feel at peace and stuff, and they're just whipping these gardens into shape too. I mean, some places they go, it truly is overrun. It's a jungle, it's wild, it's full of weeds, and a lot of plants are suppressed and stuff like that. <clears throat> and they're doing, you know, in a certain sense or whatever, and a lot of people, even humbly or sincerely, they think, you know, there are some people who, who with all due respect, hand out parking tickets, there are some people who you know, work in slaughterhouses and some people who do this and that, and hey, to each his own, right? But for the gardener, the landscaper, I mean, they're working in the environment and with nature and stuff, so, you know, they have, you know, you, you usually they like to believe, and which could be definitely true, that you're not this close-minded jerk who who's going to make a beautiful garden, but then on your off time, you just litter and you pollute. I mean, it's hard to do that, especially because your, his or her career is working in the environment and they see that. It's hard for them to be able to do that and then to, to really, or to truthfully, actually be a callous, insincere, or inconsiderate person when it comes to nature and the environment. Right? And it happens over time. They rock up, pull up to a property, and they just think, you know, the energy and these plants and these things, and they love me, and I love them, and they're just waiting for me, and... And what I thought about, having been in that situation, having been a gardener, landscaper, what I thought about is, a weed, a weed is an invasive plant, but it's still a plant. For example, many weeds have beautiful flowers, but it might be classified, described, or treated, or thought about as a weed for a couple of reasons. One very simple or basic reason is it's undesirable. It's an undesirable plant. Now, uh, there could be a couple of reasons why it's undesirable. Okay, it might not be native. It, uh, so it's invasive, it's introduced, and because it, it's, not, um, it's not growing in its normal environmental conditions, the conditions might not, might not keep it in check, it might not be a healthy relationship. Uh, so, it, it might, so, so it might capitalize, or it might benefit, or it might behave in such a way to this different environment that is, that is unhealthy or undesirable to the rest of the environment around it and stuff. So it would be classified as a weed, it would be classified as an invasive plant, an undesirable plant that's out competing other plants or, or causing some kind of problem or something or not helping the, the wildlife that's coexisting as well and stuff. But it's still a plant. But if the gardener is going to think or imagine what everything is saying, then I imagined, I contemplated that there's as many plants and things, entities, life forms, biological here, earth, in the plant kingdom, and the animal kingdom as well, that were happy that the gardener was coming there, that the gardener was doing something that was going to benefit them, for as many that were happy 
there probably were an equal amount that were devastated, that were unhappy. So when the gardener rocks up, pulls up in their truck with all their equipment, there were just as many plants, there were just as many animals that said, oh no, this guy, this girl, oh no. The web that I spent all night building, the tunnels that we made, the holes, the entrances and the exits, the amount of destruction that comes through from the lawnmower, the whippersnapper, how many, how many of us die? Weeds. Okay, well, you don't like the weed because it's this or that or that or this. That's fine, okay? But understand what the side of the weeds think, okay? They don't think, well, you know, you got me. You got us. Yeah, you're right. We don't belong here. What's fair is fair. They don't think that. It's genocide. It's genocide. They're not happy. They're not cool with that. You go stomping through the garden, how many insects? They're not cool with that. How much soil? How much topsoil? How much organic matter are you removing? When you're cleaning everything up, when you're mowing everything up, when you're blowing. Who's cool with that? So, when the gardener pulls up, yeah, there's a lot of plants, there's a lot of creatures and little critters that, oh no, oh no, the nest that I just made, the eggs, the larvae, 